Today I want to talk about my E flat beater guitar evolution and kind of what these guitars are for, where they're going, and what I'm going to do to them. So, first of all, I'm going to start with this guitar here. This is an Epiphone Les Paul Special 2. Um, the Special 1, I believe, has P90 pickups. This one does have the humbuckers in it. And so it's kind of like your classic Les Paul style guitar. Doesn't have a carved top, just has the flat top, uh, single cutaway. But the place where they kind of skimped on this guitar, other than having no body binding, a flat top, no binding on the neck, and the cheaper pickups, is the control switching. So here you can see you have your pickup selector, but you only have one volume knob and one tone knob. So the reason that I bought this guitar was to play, uh, you know, mid '90s grunge songs without having to retune down to down half a step to E flat. Now, this is a guitar I bought from a kid who probably got it for Christmas and never really played it. Uh, bought it for 65 bucks. Came with a guitar strap, and I thought, that's pretty low risk. I think I'll try it out. The neck on this is not great. I mean, it's playable, but it is really thick and chunky, and uh, you really got to work to play it. Really, um, it's a beginner guitar, but not really a great beginner guitar. And so while I have played it a few times and had a lot of fun playing those songs, just what I like to do sometimes is use my different pickups to uh, turn the volume down on one of the humbuckers so that you can get a clean sound for, you know, like during your chorus or during your uh, verse. And then the chorus, you flip the do the bridge position, and you get that bite and that saturation um, to send your amp into distortion territory. And so whenever I'd try to do that, I would get my clean sound set up, and then I would go and flip it into my you know roaring bridge distortion sound, and it was the same sound because it shares the same. It is completely different to um, what I had done. I started looking around for something to replace this and one day on facebook marketplace i happened to find this red guitar this is an ibanez gax 70 um, in a red transparent finish now this is the first decent guitar that i had bought but i bought the black version the red was going to be out of stock for like two months and i needed a guitar quick so i went ahead and ordered the black one um and you know i I always was like, man, I should have just got the red one. But uh, so anyway, on Facebook Marketplace, I saw someone selling this guitar for $80. This guitar is pristine. It's like it got put in a closet for 20 years and was never even touched. I found one tiny finished scratch, not even really that deep, but it'd probably buff right out on the back. Everything else, it's got the original strings on it and they don't even have any gunk on it. I mean, this is just a great guitar. It's got the function of the the uh, individual sets of tone and volume pots. But I ran into a situation recently where I took my son to Guitar Center, threw a bunch of guitars at him to try to figure out what he liked. Did he like, you know, Telecasters, Stratocasters, uh, Les Paul style guitars? And what he found out is that he likes transparent red or heritage cherry sunburst uh les paul style guitars and he likes them with double cutaways and i realized that i have the guitar he wants as my beater e flat guitar so i started to look for a guitar to replace that and that's when i saw this on a local advertisement for 100 dollars. so we went from $65 to $80 to $100. What this is, is it is a Epiphone Les Paul 100. So this is basically one step below a Les Paul Studio. It does have a bolt-on neck, 
but you can see kind of barely that it has the appropriate volume and tone controls for each of the pickups. But it also has a carved top. So it's kind of a different, uh, kind of an in-between line. Um, and and I kind of like the idea of having a, a bolt-on neck for a beater guitar because if the neck ever has a problem and breaks, then I could um, just go ahead and get a new neck off of eBay or something for it. Hopefully for pretty uh, inexpensive price, especially if I've done things like up to upgrade the electronics. So originally this guitar, I thought, well, hey, what if I put some dual concentric pots on here so that maybe this one, you know, I could have the volume and tone in one control. And then for the bridge pickup down here, have a concentric pot there, select between the two, but it, I just couldn't find anything that would really work. And that's when I decided that for the same price, I might as well just find another guitar. So here's what the plan is, is number one, this guitar is going to go to my son as his first full size guitar. He's been playing a three quarter size guitar for about a year and a half now. Um, and this guitar is going to get sold. However, this guitar has some issues. Um, other than just the cosmetics of having this um, Modge Podge newspaper clippings and stickers on here. Um, it also has a dinged fret, which you probably can't see very well uh, in there. But uh, if, if you push on the C string, it doesn't even do anything. It plays this same note. The, de the fret is dinged that bad. Now, I did notice this when I was checking out this guitar. And against my better judgment, I did buy it. Um, I think I was just excited about giving my son his first decent guitar. And so I thought I could deal with that. I've read about maybe patching this with some silver solder. That that, you know, is a kind of a temporary fix that'll last a little while. Especially in the guitar I'm going to play maybe a few times a year. It might just be fine. So the plan is to kind of gut this guitar. Um, the pick guard that came with it also had this Mod Podge stuff on it. I soaked that in some water for a few hours. Got like a, a, a cast iron pan scraper. And which is a, basically a big guitar pick, right? And just scraping at that after soaking it for a few hours, I got all that stuff off. So it kind of gives me some hope that if I take everything off of this guitar, including uh, the neck, get all the electronics off it, I can't really soak the guitar in water. I've read that if you get a, uh, like a, a washcloth and put it on it, it can kind of um, help to soak it. So, but then you might get water running into pickup cavities and ruining the wood. So I thought what maybe what I would do is put the washcloth on a flat surface and then go ahead and put the body on top of that. Um, with as hot a water as I can, maybe even like boil it and then let it sit for a little bit and start scraping this stuff off. If it doesn't come off, maybe I'll just put some pictures that I like more on this, but Anyway, that is the plan. And the other thing that I need to do is uh, this is going to be go back to its original purpose of being my E flat guitar while this is uh, being worked on. But this is going to be sold and I got to get ready to sell it. Um, this, after I bought it, I don't think I ever did like a one through just to make sure that everything was good, probably just because it was never played. But now that it's going to be going to my son, I want to make sure that, you know, all the wiring is good in here. Nothing is loose or going to cause a problem. Make sure the tuners are tight. I polish up the frets. Give that, uh, give the fret board an oil. Um, so I'm going to kind of cover that a little bit. 
And then I'll cover what I'm doing with uh, this guitar. Anyway, that's the evolution going from here, here to here, now back to here, and eventually to here. And um, I've seen pictures with just the, the black top, uh, Les Paul 100 with the cream pick guard and these gold knobs. And it looks pretty, as about as good as a black guitar can look. They're kind of boring. In fact, my Ibanez GX70 originally was black. And for shows, I used to put things like wrapping paper on it just to kind of give it some character. And eventually I sanded all that off and painted it in a blue burst with just rattle cans, which looked pretty good, but eventually just kind of fell off. And then gave, uh, traded that guitar for some other equipment. And um, so here it is. Now it's going to be my son's guitar. So that is another one of the projects that you'll be seeing on the channel in the future. Seems like it takes me six months to make a video. Apologize for that. Life happens. But uh, yeah, so that's the evolution. And um, I'll keep posted on how things are going there.